There you go. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be back with all of you and to see you this morning on a bright and beautiful day. This is the door, the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A couple of announcements. We're scheduled to have a leadership meeting today. Not sure that's going to happen. <laughs> if, our, if our chair is not here, we will not. Uh, but there's a couple things we can discuss that we need to discuss anyways. Uh, so leadership team, those of you who are here, we'll have an unofficial meeting it, it, to move a few things forward. Reminder that next Saturday is Dogs for Dollars. Or Dollars for Dogs, whichever way you say I got it as Dogs for Dollars. I think that's how you say and it. And Bake Sale. Okay, and Bake Sale. That will be in Cabins West in La Porte. So that's State Road 2 and Andrew Ave in La Porte. Perfect timing, yes. To God be the glory because, you know, we have to give him the glory. Right on time, Chris. We appreciate that. Um, we would appreciate some extra items for the bake sale. Uh, get a hold of Sue or talk to Sue after the service today. She can help arrange to get stuff there. Um, and that will run from 8 to 1. So we encourage you to come out if you have to be in the port or just need a reason to run to the port. That's a good one right there. So come out and enjoy. All the proceeds from that will be going to support the food pantry of which we are a part. So we appreciate that. Those are the official announcements that I have this morning. Are there any announcements that you have this morning? Scott. Well, John might have one. He had fun with the well <coughs> this last weekend. It, it, and by fun, we mean not. It went out. Yeah, me too. Yes. So he spent yeah. some time here monitoring the, the whole thing. So we did have workers come out. We do have water. It is not drinking water worthy at this point. There is bottled water out there. There is coffee brewing. So we will have fellowship time. Uh, they work fine for the restrooms and such. So we have water running. So big thanks to both of you uh, getting that. But there are some of the things that we need to discuss to make sure we do all the other things that we should do uh, right now. They did replace the motor. <laughs> the motor on the well. Uh, and there's probably, again, there's a couple of things we probably should go ahead and do now at the same time. And so we'll discuss that and we'll make that move forward as we can uh, after service today. So, but a big thanks. Um, that was at least all of one day, probably part of a couple other days with phone calls and such, I, I don't doubt. So thank you, we really appreciate you doing that. So, other announcements this morning. We are a congregation in the of this church. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I trust that you came expecting to experience God and worship this day as we celebrate our God through the power of the Holy Spirit and we worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I invite you to turn in your hymnal, Psalm 44, I think it was the number I had written down. Is our, yes, Psalm 44 is our call to worship in your hymnals near the back. Page 779 is where you will find that. And then we will turn while you're back there. Well, our affirmation of faith is a little farther back than that as well. I invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship. I will read the lighter print. You will read the bold print. <clears throat> Psalm 44, verses 1 through 8. We have heard with our ears, O God. Our forebears have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You with your own hand throw out the nations. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm give them victory. You are my ruler and my God, who ordains victories for Jacob. Nor can my sword save me. And if you will turn a few more pages back to number 885, near the very back of the hymnal. Our affirmation of faith this morning will be entitled A Modern Affirmation. It's number 885. I will have the first part, and then we will read together the rest of it. 885. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the 
one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love and has set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. If you will turn to number 70 near the front, that is our musical response for our affirmation. Number 70. Glory be to the Father. turn to number 98, so we're trying to keep things close and easy to find in the hymnals this morning. It's just how it's working out. Our first hymn, To God Be the Glory, is hymn number 98. We had a preview of that just a moment ago. <laughs>
pray for the morning is found in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 24, various verses. Scott, did you help do some readings last week? Did you do any scripture readings last week? Yeah. You'll like because this one has all the words in it that are difficult to pronounce, so you don't have to do this one. <laughs> Unless you would like, I'm you know, more than willing to, to, to pass. <laughs> so I know this, so... Uh, in, in, the other, in the other church, we're starting to use uh, scripture readers and stuff, and, and we'll start implementing that here as well. Uh, opportunity and said, but uh, if, if you mess with me too much, I'm going to give you this kind of a, a, a you know, scripture to read. It has all the names you can't pronounce, the places you've never heard of, it, and those kind of things. So, but we'll, we'll do the best we can as well <laughs> through it all. So he said, uh, he, so he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy, and he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink. And who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, Naor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads, May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer at Lahoi at Roy, and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Continue our service by lifting our praises and petitions to God, opening our hearts in prayer. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be away last Sunday. It was a long round trip to deliver somebody to camp. She made it halfway through the week. She got a little bit homesick, a little grim, understood because this was her birthday week. Um, Thursday was her birthday, and July 4th we tend to do a lot of stuff, and so understood. We got a call on the evening of the 4th and said, all right, let me know tomorrow by noon because if I need to go get her, it's a, it's a bit of a trip. Uh, south of Bloomington, Indiana is where Camp Indicosa was, but she she didn't get a lot out. We had a, a nice chat on the way home uh, to talk about it, so there were a lot of good things she came out of. It's just, it was, I think, just too far and just too much happening at home that she was missing out on, or afraid of missing out on anyways, but we saved some fireworks for her last night, so she was good with that. She, she enjoyed that, but but thank you for the opportunity to uh, be with me away last Sunday. I appreciate that. Um, just, yeah, a great time for her to be able to be a part of that. So, Doug, it's great to have you with us today. I know you're probably not feeling the best. At least you found one of the padded views uh, to be in. Probably doesn't help a whole lot, but uh, thank you. 
caregivers and aides and staff and administrators of hospitals, long-term care facilities. We have centers, home care, hospice care, medical offices, traveling nurses, all the wonderful work that they do. The places they go, the service that they give to us. Long hours and short staff, we understand. So we pray, Lord, that as we experience them, that we give them grace, and that we also tell them how thankful we are for the work that they do. For our first responders of our communities, our firefighters and EMS teams and police departments, we pray so we'll continue to provide for them, abide with them, keep them safe as they protect and serve us. We're so thankful for the work that they do. We pray for your church. Your church that is under persecution throughout the world. Your hidden church, those who must worship in darkness or under cover. Those who are unable to worship because of the violence and the oppression and the injustice that they are surrounded by. We lift to you your saints, O oh Lord. We pray for our sisters and brothers who are in distress. We pray for your hand of mercy. We pray for that peace that passes all understanding. We pray that you will be glorified in all that we say and do. I'm thankful for this congregation. I know that when they leave from here, they go into their communities and they make a difference in the lives of those around them, their families, their friends, their co-workers, their neighbors, people that they pass in the marketplace and on the streets, bringing your son Jesus with them, showing them love and mercy and grace, hope, joy, and peace. I pray so continue to bless encourage, and enable us for your work, building your kingdom. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us all to pray in this name. Our Father, who is in Testament reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 7, verses 15 through 25a. Paul writes, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But if in fact it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. A reminder that our offertory plates are here at the front of the sanctuary and our special collection for Daughters of Rahab and uh, Heifer International are up here as well. A safe way for us to give of our tithes and offerings and gifts to God. I invite you to stand. We will sing our doxology, and then we will pray the prayer that is in the bulletin. Our doxology is number 95 near the front of the hymnal. Praise God, Like a parent, you're joyful when we find joy 
and your heart aches when we fall, fail, or feel less than the beloved heirs of the kingdom you meant us to be. The yoke the Bible describes doesn't burden us, but reminds us that you yearn for us to be a church, a community that supports, studies, and sustains when life makes us weary. The gifts we give this day, we give in gratitude for this yoke that helps us finish the race in faithfulness. Bless our giving and its use, we pray, in Christ's name, amen. You may be seated together and we will sing hymn number 363, And Can It Be That I Should Gain.
difficult tune, but it's a beautiful hymn and the words behind it. I invite you to stand for the reading of our gospel as you are able. Our gospel this morning is Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. The gospel according to Matthew. But to what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We play the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wail, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. So turning back to Paul's letter to the Romans, and, and we've talked a little bit over the past uh, several weeks about how sometimes Paul can sound confusing. Unfortunately, I think Paul is kind of spot on with this one, and, I, and I'm wondering, that's why the title of the message is, is Paul talking about me? I mean, it starts out, I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want to do, but I do the very thing I hate. For I do what I do not want. It's no longer I that do it, but, but the sin that dwells within me. For I, I delight in the law of God. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. I do not understand my own actions. I do not do what I want, but the very thing I hate. Now I'm sure this probably only applies to me this morning, but I'm going to preach it anyway. Just in case there might be just a little bit of that truth found in, in any of the rest of you. And the rest of it that it doesn't apply to, just humor me and just go along with us anyways, okay? But do you understand what Paul is saying here? Again, I think it's pretty clear. Paul is spot on. Try as we might. In our humanness, we often fail. We often fail. We fall short of the glory of God. God provides us with opportunity. God opens doors for us to exclaim God as who God is. To explain Jesus' as Son to the world around us. And too often, if we even walk up to the threshold of the door, we just fail to pass through. We just kind of turn around or maybe we close the door and walk away. We just, we just don't quite go and follow the will of God. When we as humans are allowed to make choices, well, bad things usually happen. At least in, in my own case, right? I mean, I, do I really need that? No, I don't, but I'm going to get it anyways. Kind of thing, right? We, we make those choices. And sometimes when we're given an opportunity to meet or to greet or to, to introduce Jesus to someone, we, we, we just we, we lose our faith in that moment. The most outgoing of us become introverted. We become shy. We, we, we don't know what to say. We, we, we turn and we walk or, or run away. We, we fail to, to share Jesus with those who know the most. I don't know if you picked up on it or not. In the reading of the Old Testament, where the servant puts a ring on Rebecca's nose. Did, did you pick up on that this morning? And, and when it was read, again, I had someone else reading that for me in the other church this morning, and she had to stop for a moment. Put a ring on her nose? Was the explanation I was studying over there? Yes. For that was commonplace. Now today, when we see people be jeweled with various items of jewelry in different ways and different places, it sometimes catches us for a moment, right? If we're honest, we sometimes think it odd. Ah, but yet we can turn to the Old Testament and say that that is not odd. In fact, that is an old custom. And we need to check ourselves when we have those 
judgmental thoughts, if you will, when we say, well, I'm not so impressed with that, well, why not? First of all, why are we looking at the jewelry and not at the person? Today, probably more than ever, we, we see tattoos more prominently shown. Now, tattoos have always been around, men and women, but oftentimes they, they seem to, they cover them. But tattoos, <coughs> excuse me, tattoos are a way of, of expressing one's thoughts, one's actions. And often, if you take the time to if you really pay attention, you'll find a lot of faith behind those tattoos. If you really pay attention to what sometimes is on someone's arms or legs, you will see Words of faith. Doug, you heard share with us your work helmet. Okay? You shared a way of, of showing faith and sharing faith, and oftentimes, even through, through the jewelry, how many people wear a cross today? Okay? Or how many people have a cross or a Bible verse as a tattoo? We need to understand that the world should not look and talk and act like we do. That'd make the world a very boring place, wouldn't it? And we need not be judgmental. We should be accepting and understanding of those who choose to look or talk or act a little differently or to have hair. Oh, come on. That's worth a laugh right there. You know, come on. Fine. I'm here all day. Just telling you, okay? We need to be understanding. And we need to catch ourselves at our moments of humanity when it's human nature to quickly have that, that judgmental, not the stare, but that judgmental reaction. And folks, the face will give it away. Okay, if you encounter someone, and, and, and be careful, be mindful of how you express anything. Because your, your, your face is going to show them. You know, it, was that a quickly a, a moment of judgment or was it quickly a moment of acceptance? Hi, it's, it's good to see you today. Thank you for being with us. Because we need to understand that this is the precious child of God that we are dealing with. Someone who may not know God as well as we do. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I want to serve God. I want to be ready at a moment's notice to go where God sends me until the right up until the very moment where God actually sends me. But, well, I'm not so sure I want to go there. I'm not so sure what to do. How are we trapping and putting God in a box when we do that? As opposed to truly, truly living our faith. See, believe it or not, we have people around us who look to us, who know that we are people of faith, and are looking to us in their time of need. I can't remember the last time somebody actually looked at me and thought I was perfect. Probably because it never happened, but, but besides the point. But they look at you and think that, you know, you've got it all together. You know what's going on. You've got this. Even with, in the midst of our own trials and tribulations. Even in the midst of, of the ravages of what cancer does. Waiting forever for the surgery to happen and now the recovery to go with it. People look to you and they see your faith. And they want to experience that for themselves. They want you to help them. And we need to be willing. And it's a challenge. I know there are difficult days for all of us. It's a challenge, but we need to be ready and willing to share our faith. Sometimes it's sharing by telling a story, by, by talking with them. Other times it's really just by listening. Listening. I had the opportunity to have one of those cash flow sessions the other night. It was really more about listening. It was what they needed to say and get out and get off their chest it was more about that than any nuggets of wisdom or, or pearls of intelligent thought that I could give because those are very few and far between let me tell you but it wasn't about it was all about the listening letting them say what they needed to say and they felt whole after that they felt better they felt some relief and sometimes that's what people are looking for they're looking for that opportunity to express themselves Look at that opportunity to share what's on their mind with someone who is just sitting there willing to listen, to accept what's coming forth, and to show the love of Jesus to you. We're all capable of that. We've all experienced that. That's a wonderful thing. Sharing God's love should be easy for us because we experience it daily. 
Sharing God's grace again should be easy for us to do because we have experienced grace throughout our lives. Certainly not based on what we deserve. It's based entirely on that love. Again. Jesus has again and again been faithful to us. Show mercy and joy and peace. Over the past four weeks, I've had the opportunity to preach at four different funeral services, celebrations of life. Honestly, I don't record them. But I enjoy when I'm able to share with someone who I knew was a person of faith, to share with the family, and to share with those in the congregation who may not know the faith of that family member. I don't shy away from the opportunity to preach Jesus. Okay? Especially those who may not know Jesus. I don't do it in a heavy-headed way. I don't have to, to talk the Bible. I just share it with them, look around them, to those who know faith. If you don't know the faith of this dear person to have who we know is experiencing joy in heaven, then grab the hand of someone near you and get to know them and let them share who Jesus is with you. I struggle sometimes to prepare for this. How do we celebrate through tears and in a time of mourning and grief and yet our hope, that hope of salvation, that promise that we have through Jesus allows us to And we struggle with those temptations of life, those trials of life, those, those bad decisions that we make. I keep praying that, you know, okay, I'm going to flip a course of decisions. This time I have land on the side and tell me what to do, but I know I'm, I'm going to make the wrong choice otherwise. That's just my nature. But we have a firm foundation in Jesus. And people are looking to us as people of faith. What should we do? How should we do? How should we behave? And when they see hate, or they see our, rolling our eyes and how somebody looks or acts. Or they hear us talk and it's not love that they hear. What do we expect from them? But when they encounter Jesus, when they encounter that acceptance, that love, that grace, that mercy, changes their lives. In that moment, they realize that they are a precious child of God, and when you're willing to spend time with them, when you're willing to invest time with them, it might be for a few minutes, it might be for an hour, but you investing time in them is time that they're with Jesus, that they may have never experienced before. These are things that all of us can do. Every one of us has the inherent ability to do that all right. Because we've experienced Christ. We pray for forgiveness. I pray for forgiveness. Paul's spot on. I'm telling you, he's talking about me right now. He wrote this a long time ago. He could have gone just a little bit lighter, you know, with, with some of how he, you know, kind of poured it on me there, but Paul's spot on. I have a time to pray. But I serve a Savior who has never failed, whose promise has always been true, and whose love is sure. In a few moments, we're going to come to a time of communion. We will pray the prayer where we seek Jesus. Pardon is our prayer of confession. I invite you, if you want to spend some time in the front pew after partake of that, and pray to God. Saying, God, I'm sorry for the poor decisions that I notoriously make and often to me. God, I ask for forgiveness for those opportunities that you've given me and I have failed to take advantage of to share my faith with others. And God, even when I'm struggling, I know that there are others who still need me to share my faith. And it's okay to struggle. It's okay to need help. It's okay to ask for help and for prayer. And to allow others to see how faith works. Whether I'm in the valley, challenging times. It's okay in our humanness to acknowledge that God is God. No, you're not. But that God still loves you. Amen.
For those of you worshiping at home, I invite you to hit pause right now and go and get uh, some juice and some bread. And for the rest of us, I invite you to turn in your hymnals. Uh, page 12 is the liturgy that we will follow through. Couple of reminders first. In the United Methodist Church, all are welcome at this table. Regardless of your degree of church affiliation or where that affiliation may be, you are welcome to have communion with us. Whether or not you have communion is between you and our Lord. The other reminder is that we will serve here at the altar today. As you come forward, I will place a piece of bread in your hand. You will take a cup. You will serve yourself with both elements at the same time in that way. When you're done, there's a basket on the second pew that you can put your empty cup in as you go back. If you're unable to come forward, I will bring communion to you. So please just allow me uh, the time to be able to do that. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. <coughs> Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. As you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to forgive the sins of your people, so you continue to invite your people to receive this grace and find rest for their souls. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When the world was filled with sin, you sent him to lead us back to you. But many resisted him and condemned him to death. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. The world is weary and heavily burdened, and Christ offers us rest. By your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, 
So Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at the heavenly banquets. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body and blood of Christ, by which we are connected with him, taking his yoke upon ourselves and finding rest for our soul. We'll begin serving from the back. Chris, if you'll wait a moment, I'm going to bring Doug and Beth communion to them, so Doug does not have to come up here right now. Well, Beth has got you trapped. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Help us be connected with the resurrected Christ, that we may rest our burdens on him. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit, to give ourselves for others, 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. I invite you to stand and join in singing our closing hymn, Thy Word is a Lamp, hymn number 601. And following that, we will have our benediction response. We'll be in the smaller book. Benediction, our response will be 2071. That's in the Faith We Sing booklet, 2071. Receive this benediction. May the God of peace and through the blood of the eternal covenants brought back to the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.